Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Moments with Truth, which is a television outreach of the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We sincerely pray that you will be blessed as you view today's program. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Give thee thanks and praise, O God, for being so good to us. Thank thee for thy mercies, which endure it forever. Call upon my soul and all that is within me to praise thy name, for thou art worthy to be praised. Give thee thanks, O Lord, for delivering me from the power and penalty of sin. And look to that day when to be delivered from the presence of sin. I praise you, God, for this opportunity to tell others of knowing Christ as their true and personal Savior, of coming to him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thank thee for his suffering upon the cross his death to set us free. He shed his blood that we can have remission for sins. And I pray, O God, that many will come to the Lord Jesus Christ and be forgiven and be washed and cleansed from all unrighteousness. Praise be to thee for this opportunity granted. And praise, praise thee, O God, for this medium that we can use and ask that thou will bless all those who are in facilitating this program. And ask thee, O God, that thy Holy Spirit will so lead and guide and overrule. And all the praise and the honor will be thine as thy word. Meet the hearts of those who are in need of their soul salvation, that they may turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thee thanks, we give thee praise through that worthy name. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We will read today from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah and chapter 17. And we read two verses, verses 9 and 10. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And certainly the Lord will be pleased to bless the reading of his precious word for his dear name's sake. Here the Lord himself is declaring that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. As I mentioned, the heart. I sure your mind will go thinking of that muscular pump that we have slightly to the left of our chest that pumps blood around the body to the vein, the, the artery, to the arteries, receive blood from the veins. We are dependent upon the heart, which started to work since probably we were conceived. 
after three months. An organ so important, just about the size of our face. And when the heart fails, we die. So important is the heart. But here we read that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? We are not speaking of that organ. But there are different dimensions and definitions of the heart, different views and that we can look at of the heart. Not something that we can see or something that could be remedied by man, only by God. Because we read, I, the Lord, search the heart. I, the Lord, search the heart. The question is asked, who can know it? Only God can search the heart. And we look at different areas that will have us to understand more of the heart we are speaking about, not the organ that we have, and it's so important it is. The heart is the entire reservoir of the entire life and power. The heart is very important. And in the Psalms and, and, and 40, we read in verse, verses 8, the psalmist said, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, Thy law is within my heart. Verse 10 says, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Verse 12 tells us, For innumerable evils have compassed me about my iniquities have taken hold upon me, so I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore, my heart faileth me. And the heart is also the seat of love. The seat of love. There love rests. And not only love, but hatred as well. In the, in the contrary, love and hatred. And in Timothy, 1 Timothy, and chapter 1 and verse 5, the writer Paul said, Now the end of the commandment is charity, out of a pure heart. And it is also the seat of hatred. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17, he said, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. So we have that reservoir, that seat that you can have hatred. You can have love coming out of the heart. The heart is the center of thought and compassion, conception as well, because the heart knows, the heart knows. And in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy and chapter 29 and verse 4, it says, yet the Lord hath not given you an heart to perceive this is the prophet, uh, the writer here, rather, speaking to the children of Israel, as Moses wrote. And perhaps if we read the, the preceding verses, it gives us an idea of what he was telling them. He said, And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh and unto all his servants and unto all his land 
the great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles, yet the Lord hath not given you an heart to perceive or to comprehend, to understand. They couldn't comprehend. They couldn't understand. They didn't have that heart to understand what the Lord was doing, all because of their contrary ways, their contrary walk with God. The heart understands as well. If you look to the, the, the book of Proverbs, it tells us this, and Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 5, it tells us, O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. And Isaiah as well tells us something about the heart. And it will have us to understand that the heart understand. Isaiah and 44, Isaiah 44 and verse 18. It tells us, They have not known nor understand or understood, for he had shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. So the heart understands. The heart deliberates as well. The heart reflects. Because we see that Mary, when she was told by the angel that she will conceive this child of the Holy Ghost, and Mary eventually looked at the Lord Jesus Christ and she Look at the shepherds. They came and they glorify him. We read in Luke chapter 2 and verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. In her heart. So the heart reflects. And in the heart there is joy. For Isaiah also tells us this in chapter 65. And verse 14, he said, Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but he shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So we see that there is joy in the heart. There is sorrow or pain as well in the heart. And in, in Proverbs, the book of Proverbs and chapter 25 there we see as well that the heart is a place where there is pain, pain emitting from the heart. And Proverbs and chapter 25, Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 20, here the writer, the wise man is saying, As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather, just imagine taking away a garment in cold weather. It gives that person an awful feeling, very chill and cold. And it says, As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather, and as vinegar upon nitre. So you pour vinegar upon salt, it will not melt it. The, the, the crystal is still there. It doesn't have any effect on it. He says, so is he that singeth songs to an heavy heart. So we see that the heart is a place where you can ha feel pain and there is no effect upon the heart. The Lord Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples in John's Gospel, and uh, chapter 16 and verse 6, the Lord Jesus Christ told them many things. And uh, when he told them and revealed to them what he must go through and what they will go through, the Lord Jesus Christ said unto them in John 16 and verse 6, Because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Sorrow hath filled your heart. And the heart is a place 
of the laboratory is a laboratory, as it were, a place where all the issue and the evil thoughts emanate. And when we read the Lord Jesus Christ speaking of the heart, because we read in the, the book of Jeremiah, in the passage that we read, Jeremiah chapter 9, uh, chapter 17 rather, as we look at verse 10, it said, I, the Lord, search the heart. I tried the reins. I, the Lord, search the heart. You know, we can have very good friends, but we do not know what is in their heart. We cannot understand what is in their heart. And looking at the scourge, the crime scourge, and the, the rise in rapes, the rise in thefts, burglaries, robberies, murders, etc. It emanates from the heart. And it's difficult, even though we have a very good friend and close to someone, to know what is in their heart. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ, he could have said to the disciples as he spoke to them, he said, because I've said these things unto you, sorrow had filled your heart. There were many times that he perceived what was in the heart of the people. He did miracles. There were those who wanted to kill him. He departed from them. He knew what was in their heart. He could have told them what was in their hearts because he searched the heart. And so the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Deceitful. And many of us, I'm sure, have experienced the deceitfulness of friends and relatives and, you know, people around. And no doubt, they perceive some of our deceitfulness as well. That is the heart, deceitful and desperately wicked. We see the wickedness abounding even in our land today. And I often say, legislation, no government, no amount of police can prevent certain crimes from happening. Man need a change of heart, a change of heart. For the things that come from the heart, come from the heart. And if we should look at James and chapter 3 and verse 14, you know, they were bickering, and they are always bickering, even among the people of God. And he said, but if ye have bitter envy and strive in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. So he was speaking even to believers, to Christians, having bitterness in their hearts, envy and strife. He said, glory not, and lie not against the truth. These are things we should put away, put away from us. And in Acts, we saw where the Apostle Paul, he gave some, he had a discourse, and there were those when they heard what he said, they were cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart. You know, and they gushed upon him with their teeth. They were upset. It affected them. And you know, so very often when we, we, we tell the truth, the truth affects people. The truth has people feeling guilty. And so they are upset. And as the Apostle Paul spoke the truth to them, he gave them a recourse, as it were, of things they did and things that were against God against the people of God, against the name of Jesus. And they were cut to their heart and they gushed upon him with their teeth. And so it is, my dear friend, 
Who can know the heart? I, the Lord, search at the heart. And if we should look at Mark's gospel, Mark's gospel, and chapter 7, Mark's gospel, and chapter 7, there we see that the heart is a place that many evils and much evil comes from. If we should read from verse 20, he said, and he said, because the people, that is, the Pharisees, the Jews, they were striving against the disciples because they did not wash their hands before they eat. It was the tradition that you wash before you eat. And because the disciples didn't do it, they came and they complained. And the Lord Jesus Christ heard their complaint. The Lord Jesus Christ said, That which cometh out of the mouth of a man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, out of the heart, the one who searched the heart could tell you what is coming out or what can come out of the heart. He said, from within, out from the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these things come from within and defile a man. It comes from within the heart of man, and this defiles the man out of the heart. And in Matthew chapter 12, Matthew's gospel, and chapter 12 and verse 34 is saying, O ye generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of a good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. You see, the heart is where such evil emanates. And as we read in the Gospel of Matthew, and chapter 7 of the things that proceed out of the heart, this is exactly what we are seeing even in our day. This is what is causing the increase in crime, strivings among people, relatives, siblings, so much strife because there is envy. There is well, just evil thoughts, murders, he said. So we are seeing much murders in our land today. And it is increasing. This, is, this comes from the heart. What man thinks. How man do things as it were. And you know so very often, when someone do something, it was already conceived in the heart. And you know, so very often we say, actions speak louder than words. We see the action but this was already conceived in the heart. You think about it. It was planned in the heart already. And so he said, thefts, covetousness. So much covetousness today. We see that siblings, they all separate from each other because of covetousness. Perhaps someone left some property and everybody wants it. Or in fact, someone wants to get all. Someone wants all of it. Covetousness. And we want as well what is not ours. You know what is not yours, you want it. That is covetousness. You want what somebody else has. And so we see wickedness, deceit, laviciousness, 
and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these things come from the heart. But my friends, you can have a renewed heart. You can have a change of heart. Your heart could be a place at the dwelling place of Christ. You know, to get that change, you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10, it tells us, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be saved. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. You can trust him in your heart. There is a place that you can have a change. You can have salvation. Let Jesus come into your heart. Let him come in today and come in to stay. Your heart can be the dwelling place for Christ. The dwelling place for Christ. And Ephesians and chapter 3. Ephesians and chapter 3 and verse 17. It tells us. Ephesians 3 and 17. There it says, This I say unto you, and testify in the Lord. Oh, sorry, 3 and 17. I read 4 and 17. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love. That Christ can dwell in your heart by faith. So you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You trust him in your heart. You believe in him. And you, are, you can be saved. You can have a renewed heart. And Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. This is what the Apostle Paul was telling the Ephesians. It can be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit as well. The dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And it, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians and chapter 2 and verse 1, it tells us that. Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 22, it tells us that your heart can be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. What a change. That heart so deceitful and desperately wicked can be the dwelling place of Christ and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for viewing and may God bless you. Thank you for viewing today's program. We invite you to contact us at any of the media advertised or visit us at any of the meetings that appear on the screen. Dear friends, Remember that Jesus saves, he keeps, and he satisfies. May God bless you.